What's up everybody? Over the past few weeks, I've really been into creating cell paintings. Most, if not all the cartoon shows I grew up watching were hand drawn and hand painted one cell at a time. So I wanted to share the process I used to create a cell painting. Let's start with the supplies you'll need. A cup of water, some brushes, palette paper or mixing cups, a pencil, brush pen, colored pen, pointed nib and ink, sketch paper, paper towels, clear film, acrylic medium, paint, and an eraser. Let's begin with the sketch. I created this template and it's gonna act as a guide to help keep every layer perfectly aligned with each other. Traditional animation cells normally used up every available inch on the paper and film, but I'm only going to use a small portion for this project. I consider this step to be the most important part of the whole process. So tweak and correct every line, then go over it and clean it up some more, each time refining the design. Remember, this will be traced onto the film. You don't want to second guess anything when you start inking. Once I'm satisfied with the sketch, I'll go over it again with a colored pen. In this case, a purplish blue color. But you can use any color as long as you avoid using a black pen. You'll see why a little later. After I'm done, I'll erase any pencil marks, revealing the refined outline which will be replicated on the film. For inking, I'll be using my favorite Moon Palace Sumi ink along with my Nico G nib. The film I'm using is by Duralar and the wet media version is preferred. The film is layered with a thin piece of separation paper, which I'm also going to use. I'll tape together the top of the film and the sketch. Avoid having your fingers touch any area you intend to add ink. In fact, wear gloves if you have some. I'll lay the separation paper under my hand and again, this is to avoid direct contact with the film. To get the best lines possible, keep consistent pressure on your nib. This step takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice, so take your time. Make sure to finish each line with one complete movement. This will help you avoid having choppy lines. The purple pen I use on the outline of the sketch helps separate the lines I'm building with the ink. After the inking is done, I'll leave it out to dry.
I'll be doing all my paint mixing on palette paper instead of mixing cups. For painting, I'll be using my Atelier's Heavy Body Acrylic. Though any acrylic will do, this is just what I have on hand. If at any point my ink is too thick to work with, I'll use acrylic medium to thin it out. Flip the film over for all the painting will be done in the back. My painting method goes like this. I'll start with black, white, and the most used color first and least used color last. When painting white, I'll put a color sheet of paper under the film and remove it when I'm done. I will also try my best to do the float painting method, which basically means to have my brush float a hair over the film, making the acrylic puddle on top. And while it sounds easy, I usually end up brushing it on like a regular painting. I'll paint one color at a time, and to avoid different colors from mixing, I'll let the neighboring colors dry first. Keep colors in their intended sections, and color inside the lines as best you can. After every color is applied, I'll let it dry and add a second layer of paint. This will make the painting more opaque. If you by any chance accidentally color outside the lines, you can use an X-Acto knife to fix it. But this is going to leave unwanted scratch marks, so take your time and avoid unnecessary steps. Just like before, the background will be sketched with a pencil first and painted with acrylic after. Traditional backgrounds were painted in a variety of mediums, watercolor, acrylic, gouache, and even airbrush. I tried my best to keep the look as close to the reference photo I used for this painting. When the acrylic has dried, I'll go over the outlines with my brush pen. This will help tie everything together. After the sketching, inking, and painting is complete, you'll have a finished piece of art, something you can hang in your living room, share with a friend, and a piece to be proud of. Thank you.
It's sad to think that a lot of classic cells were lost or destroyed through the years. Luckily, a lot of them were saved, keeping this art form alive. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.